Woman of the Year is the 17th episode of the second season of Parks and Rec. This is directed by Jason Walliner, and as always, there will be spoilers from now as I go through the episode and share some thoughts. There are three parts to the narrative, two of which I didn't really care for, but they were okay, I guess. And the main part was actually quite interesting, so I'll talk about the main part last. But the other two parts focus on Andy and also on Tom. Tom needs $10,000 to buy shares to own part of the nightclub. And he ends up pitching this to various people. And he ends up getting enough. He just needs $1,000 from Andy. And if Andy has $1,000 to spare, I feel like Tom should have that much money instead of needing all of this money from other people. I don't know. Maybe he has a lot of expenses, so he can't save very much. I just feel like Andy having that much in savings is kind of unexpected. And Donna actually bought shares as well. So it was an okay part of the narrative, a little unpredictable, not the most interesting, but not bad either. And the other part focuses on Andy. Andy is thinking about getting his own place. And clearly this suggests that he's actually been quite sensible with whatever money he's earned from shoe shining, which I think is really great. And April takes him to look at some some apartments and she just so happens to take him to apartments near where she lives. And because he gave $1,000 to Tom, he's not currently in a position to make a down payment and move in. So, so I assume this is something we might revisit at some point. I do like the idea. I am slowly warming to Andy and I do like the idea of him getting his own place, being independent, seeing what else we can do with this character and giving him giving him more prospects, I guess, and, and giving him better luck in life. As let's face it, over the last one and a half seasons, he's not exactly had the best of luck. So not a great part of the narrative either, but it was fine. The main part focuses on Ron and Leslie and a letter arrives from the IOW and it's to announce the Female Empowerment Award winner. And of course, Leslie thinks it's her. It's not. It's Ron. They are giving the award, the Female Empowerment Award, to Ron Swanson. And Ron has decided that he will give it to Leslie, but he also actually wants to have some fun with her and tease her a little bit. So he does. He pretends to have this official photo shoot to do his portrait. And he's playing with a Barbie doll. And... Honestly, I liked his spirit in this. I thought he was really good fun. And eventually he tells Leslie that he is giving her the award. And then somebody from the IOW visits and says that there wasn't a mistake. It was for Ron. And the reason they're giving it to Ron, and I did wonder, we do have a bit of suspense here as we're made to wait until towards the end of the episode and we find out why exactly Ron was getting the award. And he's getting the Female Empowerment Award because nobody cares about the award. Nobody cares about this award show for women. So by giving it to a man, and particularly a man, I think they referenced his moustache and basically his physical appearances, it gets quite stereotypically manly, if you like. And by giving the award to him, people are going to pay attention. They're going to ask questions. Why are they doing this? And basically they did it not because he deserves it, but because it will get attention. And then we have the award show, very briefly. I think we spent the right amount of time there. We're not there too long, basically. Somebody is on stage, they announce the award, Ron goes up and then says that actually he's giving the award to Leslie. Leslie goes up, says she's giving it to Ron. Neither of them really want it. Ultimately, Leslie accepts it. And we end with them both together, putting it in the trash. And then when Ron leaves, Leslie scuttles back over and grabs it out of the trash. So Leslie gets her award after all. It was an interesting part of the narrative. I wasn't sure where they were going with it. It was definitely really fascinating. The pace of the narrative was great. Ultimately, I, I had good fun with it. The two subplots, as I said, the story with Tom, I didn't really care for, but I did like Donna. <laughs> I liked Donna at the end. She made me laugh. And with Andy, yeah, as I said, I do like the idea of Andy getting his own place, gaining more independence, being in a position in life where he maybe feels better about his own situation. And obviously that kind of independence and things can really the person's self-esteem. Don't really care for April. Never really liked her. Maybe my opinion on that will change because my opinion on Andy has changed. I think it was really the last couple of episodes I started to like Andy. That took a little while. 
Still don't really care for Anne very much. Don't dislike her, just don't really care. Same feeling towards Mark. So you can imagine how I feel about Anne and Mark as a couple. I could not care less. But my opinions change. They change about Andy. I wouldn't say I'm a huge Andy fan. Not yet. Maybe one day. But I would like to see him in a position of more independence. And I think he'd he'd be quite interesting to look at. Because at the moment, basically, Andy's whole storylines have been down on his luck, pining after Anne, and a little bit about his band. And I'd, I'd be keen to see what else they do with his character. But time will tell. For now, Woman of the Year, not a bad episode. The main narrative was really good. Andy's story, okay. Tom's, nah, not my favourite. But it was, it was padding. It worked well enough. Definitely, overall, a pretty decent episode of Parks and Rec.